Hello. Have you ever met an opera diva? I have. My name is Persephone Awit, and I live in Amsterdam. I studied opera in Paris and later on in the Netherlands. I performed in opera productions for a while, and I still occasionally sing in concerts. I also teach. Recently, I wrote a book called Idle Opportunities, which is a short comic novel and drawn upon my experiences as a young singer in Paris and later in the Netherlands. The time is 1992. In my book, I feature two French divas, both very different from one another. Madame de Sizac teaches opera class in the basement of the conservatory, and she is always accompanied by Romain, the pianist for the opera class. Madame Nougat teaches vocal technique upstairs. Madame de Sizac has decided to retire, and she only has a few more months to go. She's finding it very difficult these last months. She's more than ready to leave. And Madame Nougat is taking advantage of the situation. So it's a bit of a political moment. Madame Nougat is trying to introduce her own students into the upper class for two reasons. One is that it's maybe possible that her students graduate opera class very quickly on very short notice and or they are admitted into the opera class for the following year before the new teacher comes. So I'd like to read the point in the novel when Roma, the pianist, has suggested that everybody take a coffee break because Jean-Marc, one of Nougat's students, has just finished rehearsing his opera scene and that has gone rather badly. Cynthia, the main character of the book, shows up around this time. De Sizac was seething with frustration. Jean-Marc quickly left the basement while the diva berated me for not showing up earlier. I didn't feel so loved this time round, as her tone was nearly accusatory. De Sizac, despite Romain's attempt to distract her, refused any more coffee and requested that I sing Manon's opening aria when the innocent 15-year-old is all in a tizzy after an exciting stagecoach ride. My teacher glowered at me, half soothed by the music of Massenet, until Lucette arrived. Lucette immediately presented de Sizac with a Donizetti aria. The mini nougat wannabe was another one of de Sizac's nightmares. De Sizac, frozen in disbelief, listened to Lucette sing Norina's aria about how she knew all about catching a man. I'm not so sure that this aria suits you, dear. She eyed Lucette's shapeless baby blue tricot ensemble, the fluffy white blouse peeking out of the jacket that fell over her childlike body. To complete the look, a pair of old-fashioned stockings with seams crept up the back of Lucette's stick-like legs, and her bony feet were loosely engaged in a pair of high heels. Have you sung Minotti's Le Telephone? De Sizac asked. This is something right up your alley. Does it have high notes? Lucette batted her overly blackened eyelashes under her near invisible eyebrows. Mass, she said, looking at a chipped nail. Utterly exasperated, de Sizek sighed. The diva would have unapologetically said merde over a chipped nail. I could tell that de Sizek wanted to launch into her speech about how singing is not just about hitting high notes and that an aria was about communicating emotions leading to increasing states of sensitivity and expression to draw an audience in because no one buys an opera ticket for just the high notes. Yes, it has high notes, de Sizek affirmed finally. She waited without saying a single word more until Lucette had packed up and left. Where did that gentil cousine crawl out from under? Romain grimmed maniacally. Nancy, he said, indicating a city located in the eastern part of the country. De Sizac snorted. Figures. De Sizac, a natural beauty and an only child, was raised by doting parents in a region quite far from Nancy.